Hello watch fans, this is Anders here on Watch On channel. Today a review of a watch which I have actually owned three times before getting this exact version of this watch. And in my opinion, after owning this watch for approximately two weeks, this is the best value Swiss automatic diver on the market, period. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button, it's a big help. So under this fiber cloth, I will reveal the brand, and that is of course Glycine. So you see Glycine is a Swiss brand, they were established in 1914, they are now owned by Invicta, but don't get fooled, maybe you don't like Invicta, but Glycine they do their own thing with their own designs, own watches. Opening the box here, we find the watch. This is of course the Glycine Combat Sub, this is the kind of field style aged loom version, kind of, I hear some people saying it reminds them of older Omega Seamasters. You do get the reference number here, GL0083. I paid 261 US dollars for this watch, then I had to pay some shipping and then I had to pay customs. If you live in the US or other places where you don't have to pay taxes, a lot of shipping, you can definitely find these watches at around 300 US dollars. I am today wearing my brand new, factory new, Titoni Airmaster. This is a completely new watch, very, very new in the collection. I did an unboxing first impressions video. You can find the link to that one down in the description or up in the right hand corner. So here we have the Glycine. This is a Swiss made, as you see above six o'clock here watch, which is powered by the Salita SW200. Older versions are actually powered by the ETA2824. So if you buy an older version of this watch, maybe new old stock, you will get an ETA2824. So this particular version is this version, which has these 24 hour counter numerals inside of the dial here. So kind of a field style version of this 200 meter water resistant dive watch. The combat stop is a very varied a very big lineup from Glycine, so you can find a lot of different colorways, a lot of bezel colors, different die layouts, different handsets, different straps. Also, you can find them in bronze versions if you want. As I said before, I did own three other versions of this watch or three other Glycine Combat subs, and this is definitely a watch I feel much stronger connection towards. It really just feels good on the wrist, and I really like the look. I do realize that some people don't like these aged loom looks. I think it really complements this watch, so that's just my taste. You see, very simple dial, Glycine logo, and then Glycine printed on the dial below 12 o'clock, then combat, automatic, sub 200 meters, of water system to 20 atmospheres, as it, as it says. Then you have the minute counter on the railroad track, on the tracking outside of the dial here. Then you have the loom field hour markings, and then you have the 13, until 24, kind of field style hour counter inside. The hands are these very simple kind of baton style hands, and then this kind of brick style second hand. You can also find versions with a more, much more kind of Rolex inspired handset, where the hour hand is the Rolex kind of Mercedes triangle lollipop hand. A nice little feature as well here, or a little design idea is that they actually color match the date wheel at three o'clock. So that's a really nice little detail. You see a lot of watch brands, they don't. It is a 60 click unidirectional bezel. Very easy to grip because you get this little part up here at 12 o'clock. Here you see the loom pip. Nice to easy to grip, everything aligns. Nice solid clicks. It's not super high end. And again, this watch is a $300 watch. So of course you don't get anything, but it's it does the job and it's very easy to operate. Coin edging here. The finishing is polished on the sides, no chamfering or anything, just brushed on the top of the locks. The good thing is you get these very angular ends to the case with the locks here, between the locks, which makes it very, very easy to put on other straps. This particular version comes on a nasal strap. It is not the highest quality. It's not super soft, but you get this little detail here with the leather which just really looks good and just makes it feel a little bit better. Glycine signed. Now the loom, let's have a look. So you see here the Swiss Superluminova does a nice job. This is a dive watch and it definitely lives up to the quality of the loom that you want on a dive watch. So no problems in the loom department. The bezel insert is aluminium. 
You see here the signed crown. This is of course a big screw down crown. Kind of reminds me of the crowns of the Rolex Submariners. Really easy to operate because it's big and everything just is easy to wind. Kind of a grindy, windy feel. Very curved down locks. The size is on the larger side. So approximately 42.6 millimeters. Thickness wise, this is a really, really sweet deal. Only 10.7 millimeters in thickness. Lock width of 22 millimeters. And then you get 50.3 millimeters lock tip to lock tip. So it's definitely not a small watch. But on the other hand, this is of course a type watch, a big Swiss type watch. So you don't want to have it too small. Here you see the glycine engraving on the case back. Sapphire crystal, 20 atmospheres, all of that stuff. Screw down case back. So less than 100 grams on the nasal strap, 86.5 grams. No biggie at all. And of course also an accuracy test of the Celita SW200 movement, which I assume is inside of this watch. And this is one of the gripes or my letdowns of this watch. I definitely want more accuracy, so approximately 15 seconds plus per day. You get pretty nice amplitude, so it's a healthy movement. But it is very obvious that glycine, they just slap in these movements on the factory. They don't regulate or anything because you can definitely easily get more accuracy out of a Celita or ETA movement. But again, this is competing with a lot of Seiko divers. This is actually less expensive than a lot of the newer Seiko divers. Even from the factory Seiko state that you can have a deviance of more than 45 seconds. So let's try it on the wrist. And here the glycine combat sub is on my 17.5 cm wrist circumference. I can easily pull it off. It's definitely not a small watch. But you see with these very down curving locks, it can easily fit to your wrist. Again, even though the nasal strap isn't a top quality nasal strap, it's still very acceptable. It feels good and I think the overall look, this James Bond kind of look, it actually fits this glycine combat sub. So I know you are pretty annoyed looking at this piece of the nasal strap not tucked in under the keeper here, but it's completely intentional because definitely if you have a larger wrist than I have, then you should definitely consider maybe buying a newer nasal strap. You can of course get holes here, but being very short compared to where you place the holes on the nasal strap, you will have this piece or you will even just fit it under here and this keeper will not even serve any function. So have that in mind. So all in all, I really like this watch. It's the perfect Swiss everyday beater dive watch. You get everything you want, a Swiss movement, nice loom, good bezel action, sapphire crystal, everything just works. So I can definitely recommend this watch. And if you can find these watches at around 300 US dollars, I think you did a great deal. Again, you can find a lot of different versions of this glycine combat sub, whatever really suits your taste. Two gripes, definitely I would want more accuracy. This is a Swiss powered watch. Definitely not okay with plus 15. It's not a big disaster, but definitely 10 or less seconds per day is definitely something I want out of these Swiss movements. And then of course the nasal strap not being the top quality nasal strap you, you prefer and maybe just being a little too short, at least with the holes here, is my two biggest gripes. Other than that, I really think that this watch is a nice watch. You get what you pay for with the finishing. Of course, this is not a luxury watch in any way at the price. So I hope you enjoyed the full review here of my Glycine Combat Sub. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Is this value or would you prefer a Seiko or any other brand? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I will see you very soon again. Thank you. Bye.